The Sixth Patriarch's Drama Drew a Platform Sutra, Chapter 2, Prana Sutra. The following day, at the invitation of Magistrate Wei, the Master took his seat and said to the Great Assembly, All of you purify your minds and think about Mahaprana Paramita. Commentary This second chapter of the Sutra is an explanation of Prana given by the Master upon the request of Magistrate Wei. Prana is a Sanskrit word which means wisdom. There are three kinds of prana, literary prana, contemplative prana, and real mark prana. Because the word prana encompasses these three meanings, it has a fuller connotation than the word wisdom. Therefore, the Chinese translators of sutras did not translate it, but instead transliterated it. The Sith Vajrak took his seat and said, all of you should quit daydreaming, listen to the drama with a pure mind and a united heart. Be mindful of Mahaprana Paramita. Mahaprana Paramita is called Great Wisdom. Maha means great, Prana means wisdom. Paramita means arrived at the other shore. Sutra. He then said, Good knowing advisors, the wisdom of Bodhi and Prana is originally possessed by worldly people themselves. It is only because their minds are confused that they are unable to enlighten themselves and must rely on a great good knowing advisor who can lead them to see their Buddha nature. You should know that the Buddha nature of stupid and wise people is basically not different. It is only because confusion and enlightenment are different that some are stupid and some are wise. I will now explain for you the Mahaprana Paramita Dharma. In order that each of you may become wise, pay careful attention and I will explain it to you. Good knowing advisors, worldly people recite prana with their mouths all day long and yet do not recognize the prana of their self-nature. Just as talking about food will not make you full, so too, if you only speak of emptiness, you will not see your nature in 10,000 ages. In the end, you will not have obtained any benefit. Good knowing advisors, Mahaprana Paramita is a Sanskrit word which means great wisdom which has arrived at the other shore. It must be practiced in the mind and not just recited in words. When the mouth resides and the mind does not practice, it is like an illusion, a transformation, dew drops or lightning. However, when the mouth resides and the mind practices, then mind and mouth are in mutual accord. One's own original nature is Buddha. Apart from the nature, there is no other Buddha. Commentary the master said, worldly people recite prana, 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 but they do not know the prana of their own original nature, of their own inherent wisdom. You may recite recipes from a cookbook from morning to night saying, this is delicious, but you will never feel your stomach that way. Saying prana is empty is not to do anything about it. In the end, it is of no benefit. It is nothing more than head, mouth, zen, and will not help you to see your own inherent, nitna, inherent prana. Instead, see everything as empty and put it aside. See it, smash it, and put it down. Everything empty. Then you need not recite it all day long with your mouth. If your mouth recites but your mind does not practice, your recitation is a worthless illusion. If you see the prana wisdom of your nature, you will not become entangled in stupid affairs. You will not be ignorant. If you remain ignorant, your mind is not practicing. If you use your mind as well as your mouth in cultivating prana, you will see that your own fundamental nature is itself the Buddha. Everyone can realize Buddhahood. You need only cultivate. What should you cultivate? Your nature. Do not seek outside yourself, but turn the light inward, reverse the illumination, and look within. 
Sutra. What is meant by maha? Maha means great. The capacity of the mind is vast and great, like empty space, and has no boundaries. It is not square or round, great or small. Neither is it blue, yellow, red, or white. It is not above or below, or long or short. It is without anger, without joy, without right, without wrong, without good, without evil, and it has no head or tail. All Buddha lands are ultimately the same as empty space. The wonderful nature of worldly people is originally empty, and there is not a single dharma which can be obtained. The true emptiness of the self nature is also like this. Good knowing advisers, do not listen to my explanation of emptiness and then become attached to emptiness. The most important thing is to avoid becoming attached to emptiness. If you sit still with an empty mind, you will become attached. To undifferentiated emptiness. Commentary: Because the mind first thought of going there, we now send broadcast to the moon. The mind has no limits or boundaries. You can't say that it is big or small, for there is nothing bigger and nothing smaller. The self nature is middle way. The true mind is neither right nor wrong, true or false. In your true mind, there are no thoughts or of good or evil. Therefore, the Sikh patriarch asked Wei Ming, the ex-soldier who had come to steal the robe and bow, with no thoughts of good and with no thoughts of evil. At just this moment, what is the superior one Wei Ming's original face? He posed this question to reveal that there is neither good nor evil in the true mind. As they say in philosophy, it has no head or tail. There is not even one single drama. It is empty. The self nature is like empty space. It contains within itself both truth and falsehood. Enlighten yourself to the original substance. In one penetration, penetrate all. When you hear me say that prana is empty, do not become attached to undifferentiated emptiness. If you do, you will see it as if dead. Continue the sick patriarch. We should cultivate true emptiness, which is a wonderful existence, not vacuity. In true emptiness, everything is known and everything is not known. Understanding complete and clear, like water reflecting the moon, the mind in samadhi, like the sky for ten thousand miles, not a cloud.